welcome to another exciting edition of TV30. My name is lovely St. Amy Joseph. I'm the Corporate Communications and Marketing Manager at the Sufer Regional Development Foundation, SRDF. Today we're talking the 2024 Scholarship and Bursary Program. Any and everything you need to know to access this wonderful support from the SRDF, you will find out today. With me is the HR officer, the Sufra Regional Development Foundation, Ms. Tamancia Fasua. She's also the coordinator of the program. And my oh my, do we have questions to ask her. But let me allow her to introduce herself to you, our viewers. Tamancia Fasua, HRDF Human Resource and Development Officer, and also the Scholarship and Bursary Program Coordinator. All right, Ms. Faswa, the scholarship and bursary program is indeed a flagship for the SRDF. I know there are many resources that go into making this program what it is, but I'd like to take a step back and, and go back to the genesis of it all. How did the program begin? The program began about 19 years ago. It is one of the oldest and most prestigious community program held by the SRDF. All right, I love that. And I know that right now you're at about 300 applicants, I believe. Last year you had about 300 applicants. But did it always start off as this extensive program or was it something that, you know, really began as a, a, a smaller initiative and has grown throughout the years? Well, the program started as a small program where they facilitated about four students assisted four. in the scholarship um, tuition fees for school so when we say that this program is the flagship program and we describe it as prestigious I want our viewers to truly understand why we use those words because it's not just primary school students who can benefit or simply secondary school students it really runs the gamut so tell us who is eligible to benefit from this program our staff members of the public, they are eligible for primary until university level. And that was the exciting one last year, yes. the introduction of the university scholarship. We will get to that, but before that, let us talk about the primary uh, level of support that is given. Mm -hmm. I think one of the many questions that I get from members of the public is, is it only open? to Sufre residents? Well, the program started off uh, open to Sufre residents. However, throughout the years, we've recognized um, mem close communities, members of the close com communities have applied for the program. So you're, you're talking about your communities, like I know we extend as far as uh, Buto, because yes, Buto is, is within the, the Sufre region, yes. within the educational district as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, many people might not know this, but Canaries is also part of District 8, eight yes. which is where Sufre falls. So I know that our board has said on many occasions that it is very difficult for the SRDF to turn away anyone mm -hmm. yeah. who comes to access help and are really in need of that kind of support. Mm -hmm. uh, our mandate is not to turn anyone away. We try to accommodate as many people as possible in our scholarship and bursary program. So I know over the years we've seen applications come from Chuzel, Chuzel and Canaries, and um, these are all, you know, vetted on a case-by-case -case basis. Yes. So since I mentioned vetting, let's talk about how you apply for the scholarship program. The applications are officially open for this yes, year, correct? Please, yes. And applications will remain open until? The 29th of July. The 29th of July. So if I want to make sure that I get my application in and that my, my child or my ward is able to access this program, what do I need to do? Okay, well, you could collect an application form from our office or we've made them available at the schools within the district. So every school within the district? district any parent can walk in speak to the principal and request that they be given one of the srdf application forms yes. excellent also our newly added 
platform, the online platform. All right, so there are many ways to do it. You can yes. come into the office, the SRDF office, mm -hmm. and access the application forms there. And I think there's help as well. Yes. Our interns are there. They are assisting in completing the forms and informing you of what is required of you to submit those application forms. Right, so if you're a bit intimidated by the process, what we're saying is that you can come into the SRDF office. There are currently interns working to ensure that they walk you through the process. They explain it to you. They can sit with you. You can have an in-depth conversation and find out how you can become part of the SRDF scholarship and bursary program. So this is an annual program for the SRDF. Uh, how much is committed to ensuring that this program is successful every year? Annually, about $200,000 is committed to the scholarship program. And what does that go to? How is that money allocated? It is allocated towards scholarship in terms of financial assistance to applicants, our staff applicants, the district top performer for CSEC and CPEA, as you mentioned, the top performers for CSEC and CPEE, yes. they would get a financial contribution towards their studies, yes. correct? Yes. Okay, but there's also the, the book aspect, the, the book, um, I think it's a, a rental, a textbook rental, rental program, program yes. where if you don't qualify, maybe you're not one of the top performers, you can actually apply for assistance with getting all of your required textbooks, textbooks correct? Yes. Yes. All right. So that money annually, you have the financial component where you give that Finance. um, financial support, you give cash support, but you also have to purchase a range of textbooks. Yes. So is that from the primary to secondary school level? Yes, it is from primary level, grade three to grade six, and secondary level from one to form five. All right. So with the top performers, of course, the criteria is being a top performer at the exams and yes. you get that financial support. Mm -hmm. But for the textbook rental program, what is the criteria there? The criteria is that uh, the applicant needs to submit their first ter their term grades from term one to term three. Uh, their average needs to be about 65%. Uh, statement of need and a student ref reform which are completed by the teacher and the principals of that student. Okay, so how involved are the principals and the teachers with the program? Heavily, they are heavily involved. Do they get an opportunity to make recommendations? Yes, they do. Most teachers do submit some students that they believe that should be awarded the bursary program. All right, now we speak about the, the book rental. Mm -hmm. These books are given out and they are supposed to be returned so that the program can continue. Yes. Do you see that happening? Are there any issues in that regard? Do you want to make an appeal to people who benefit from the book rental program to return the books to ensure that another set of students can also benefit? Well, I'd like to make an appeal that the parents return the books. These books assist us in providing the students those books. Yes. All right, so this year, I know it's the continuation. It will be this is the, the second time that the SRDF offers a university scholarship. Last year, it was introduced to allow one person the opportunity to pursue university education, mm -hmm. but on campus. And this was one of the elements that I was really, really excited about and really happy about uh, because it gives you an op There's something to be said about uh, pursuing your educational goals and, be and also being able to travel, to yes. experience a different culture, uh, to, to just explore beyond the boundaries of St. Lucia. Yes. So I know our first university recipient, the scholarship recipient, mm -hmm. was Miss Ayana Seal. Yes. I think she's currently at the University oh, of the West the Indies, Indies in, in Barbados, yes. pursuing her education. Mm -hmm. What was that process like for her and indeed for, for you and the team at SRDF? 
Well, it was a very rewarding um, process. Not only that um, she was awarded our first ever university scholarship, Ms. Ayana Seal was also a recipient for the CPEA and also CSEC scholarship reward. Um, wow. To see she receiving the university uh, scholarship was quite exciting, knowing that she received the other two before um, was quite relieving for me. So yeah. it, it goes to show that uh, they're sustaining the performance yes. throughout. So yes. she is really one of the major success stories of the SRDS yes. scholarship and bursary program because she would have received that support enabling her to go through the primary school, school level, go to the secondary school level. And mm -hmm. I think I, I had a discussion with her and I think she had over 10 uh, okay. CXC yes. Uh, s subjects then did her A levels and was a top performer in a number of the subjects. Um, one of my loves, of course, literature. I know she was a, um, a top performer at the CAPE level uh, for literature. So it speaks to the legacy of the program and the impact of the program. I know we have a, a colleague at SRDF who also went yes. through the program and received support throughout her time at secondary school and even and at Sir Arthur yes. and now giving back to the community as an employee of the SRDF. So certainly hats off. We're going to talk a bit more about the impact of the program. When we come back, we are going for a quick break. Stay with us. Hello, OECS. Yo, OECS, this is your ocean. If I am to protect your future, we have to work together. It's the time to work together. If I am to help protect your future. Once I used to be so pure and clean. And those hills were so fresh and green. But now you see me as your dumping ground. The current situations has me choking on your pollution. Think hard about it. You will agree. OECS, green actions, blue oceans. Welcome back. I'm lovely St. Amy Joseph, Corporate Communications and Marketing Manager of the Super Regional Development Foundation. With me is Mr. Mancia Fossois, HR Officer at the Super Regional Development Foundation. And today we're talking the SRDF Scholarship and Bursary Program and how you can be a part of this year's program. So Ms. Fossois, we were talking about the impact of the program before the break. Now I know there was a significant negative impact on the program due to COVID-19. Mm -hmm. We saw it across the world. It was a huge, significant negative impact on all the resources, on all sections of society. So I know there was also an impact there for the scholarship program. But in 2022, I believe, we saw the program come back in full force. So talk to us a bit about uh, that period for the program, um, having it scaled back and then reintroducing it in all its grandeur in 2022. Um, during COVID, it had a downfall due to financial constraints. Um, the scholarship program only assisted on a, on a small scale during uh, COVID. Um, however, after COVID, um, due to the large number of the public who came to me and kept on questioning about the scholarship program, I saw it fit um, to become, made it an become the advocate for the scholarship program where I went to the directors, to the chairman to emphasize on the need of re-implementing the scholarship program to its magnitude that it was once before. Okay, and in 2022, when uh, the program was sort of reintroduced, mm -hmm. how many applicants did we see for the program in that year? 
We saw about 180 applicants, which is pretty small compared to what was before. Okay. So previously you were at about 200. Okay. Yeah. So it was it was slow in terms of maybe people mm. getting reacquainted with yeah. the program and knowing that they can access that kind of support. Uh, so in 2022, uh, what would you say, what would you estimate the, the cost of the program to be? It was about $190,000. All right, that's, that's still a significant investment mm -hmm. uh, in the educational development of yes. Sufre and surrounding communities. So from 2022, last year, 2023, give us a little overview of the program. How was it then? Well, we saw a drastic increase in applicants to almost 300 uh, applicants, and that in turn saw an increase in the amount of funds which was spent during the program. So about 300 applicants. Would yes. that include the applicants for, universi for the university level? Yes, it is. All right. So you're expecting to see even more applications this year? Well, the, uh, based on the rapport I'm receiving long before the program was open, yes. All right. So I know we have the introduction of the interns mm -hmm. for the scholarship program that started in 2023. Yeah. I think initially two young people were brought on board to assist mm -hmm. um, in terms of getting the applications out there, going to members of the public. This year, correct me if I'm wrong, we have an additional person. So we have three interns assisting with the program. Well, currently we have four. One is working from home. Oh, nice. Yeah. So we have four interns working on that program yes. and who will be heading out to various communities as part of the sensitization drive. Right, yeah. Talk to me a bit about that, the sensitization drive. Well, the sensitization drive is simply to gather the community members, inform them about the program, inform them of what is required of them, assist them in completing the forms and whatnot. All right. So, I'm, I'm guessing you are going to be present at all of these uh, sensitization events that we have coming up. I think it begins next week, the 2nd yes. of July. So you have different communities getting that level of attention, as you indicated, to mm -hmm. really walk them through the application, application process, process and provide whatever level of support that they would need. Uh, so run, me, run us through the dates. I know it's the 2nd of July at the Old Trafford Complex. Uh, then you move to? Font Saint-Jacques on the 3rd. So Font Saint-Jacques and then we go? To Bouton on the 4th and then we end at Fort Jolib on the 5th of July. All right. So right in the heart of the town, we start okay. there. Then we yeah. go to Fort Saint-Jacques, we go to Bouton, we go to Fort Jolib. Mm -hmm. I know one of the, the objectives of introducing the sensitization drive was to ensure that everybody gets to know and gets an opportunity to access the access. available resources. I always say sometimes we take it for granted that people are aware of the support that is out there and how to access the support, but we, we should not assume that everybody knows. And sometimes it's not even a matter of knowing, sometimes they are aware, but some people can be a bit intimidated by the process. Maybe they think, oh, there's a, a whole bunch of paperwork. I, I'm, I'm not sure I can, you know, Continue, fill out yeah. all of this paperwork. Uh, what do I do? Where do I turn to? Mm. So I think it's excellent that young people have been brought on board as part of the program who can really walk members of the public through the application process. So there really is no excuse. If you haven't heard of it via Sufra FM, via our social media pages, we are coming to you. We are coming to the communities, um, in particular the underserved communities, yeah. some of the remote areas that, you know, perhaps they cannot make it down to town to come access the application forms. So look out for the SRDF team. We're hitting the streets. It's part of our mobilization effort for the 2024 SRDF scholarship and bursary program. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned schools. Yes. So you, you don't necessarily have to come to the SRDF office. You can actually speak to the schools. schools. Tell us a bit about that. Yes. So some of our application forms were delivered at the schools within the district where we asked the principal to assist us in 
distributing these application forms. Uh, SRDF and uh, the strict schools work very close hand in hand. Um, so we see that level of support yes. coming from the schools. schools. I can imagine that for our educators, because uh, our educators do a fantastic job. We know the level of commitment that it takes to be a teacher, to be an educator right now. You want the best for these children. You want to see them, you know, accomplish all of their dreams and aspirations. Yeah. And sometimes you know that it's very challenging for them mm -hmm. because of their socioeconomic background, that perhaps um, their educational dreams might come to an abrupt stop because they do not have the financial resources to go further. So I can imagine what a relief and, and what pride our educators must take in knowing that in Sufre, here is an organization that is saying, no, the dream does not have to stop. Money does not have to be the determining factor in whether you accomplish that dream because we are here for you. So. Tell me what's it like uh, going to the schools? What sort of reception do you get? How are they receiving the program at the schools? Well, the reception is a bit slow for the students. However, with the parents, I would say um, it's very receptive with the parents. Um, at the secondary level, students are very eager they do approach and ask questions on the funding for the tertiary level. Uh, you do get them apply on their own oh. for the tertiary level. Excellent. Yeah. So they're not even waiting on the, the parents, parents no. to go find out, to go yes. ask the questions. Because, you know, they, they have that little level of independence yeah. now. They're at secondary school. So, you know, they're, I, I love that, that yeah. they're taking the initiative and seeking out answers for themselves. And they also do their own follow-up. Excellent, excellent. So, students, our office is always open. The number is 459-7200. If you'd like to call in, you know, get some more information on this year's scholarship program, you are always free to do so. So, we are going to wrap up. But before we end, I would like you to address the viewers uh, those watching, those listening, and again, remind them how they can be a part of the 2024 SRDF Scholarship and Bursary Program. Listeners, I would uh, advise the parents to come in, collect the application forms, submit the necessary requirements uh, before the deadline. All yes. right, so remind them of the deadline. July 29, that is when we close the application process for the scholarship program. However, because CXC does, does not release the results um, in July, we do accept the results for CXC later on in August. Right, so you can get the application in and then you bring, bring in, in the, the results, results after. Now, one of the components that we did not go into... Um, too deeply, but it's definitely a big part of the program is the support to staff. So we're not only ensuring that we offer that support to the public, but our staff also benefit. Yes. Um, it's one child per household, primary school level, secondary school level, mm -hmm. all the way through. Yeah. Um, in terms of what we offer to the public, we also offer to, to our staff. staff. So the SRDF scholarship and bursary program is indeed touching many, many lives, not just in Sufre, but in surrounding communities. Be sure to be a part of this year's program. If you need the assistance, we are here for you. Visit our office. You can call in. The number is 459-7200. Visit our social media pages. You will get much more information about our sensitization drive when we're coming to a community near you. Let us all work together to make the educational dreams of our youth a possibility and a reality. Thank you for joining us. I'm lovely St. Amy Joseph, Tamansia Fasua, HR Officer, SRDF. We're signing off. Thank you for joining us.